Uh, this is uh, Binary Jazz. It's a podcast. Uh, binary Jazz. Us. In this case, us. Are us. My friend Allison. My friend Chris. We are on the internet. Go to Binary Jazz. Us to figure out where you can find us and talk at us. We will respond if we find you intriguing. Otherwise, we'll respond. Even our deafening silence. <laughs> uh, our deafening silence will be your answer. Or maybe we're just busy and social is not the best place to talk. You know, whatever. But hit us up on social, and if we want to really turn it into something, we'll invite you onto the show, and you'll be our first oh, yeah, guest. I should probably check the. Twitter I would account. not count on that happening. Um, the format: Allison brings a topic. Uh, Chris and I uh, generally don't know what the topic is, um, and then we uh, talk about it for uh, you know about forty minutes ish until Zoom is like, "I've heard enough of this." Chris, are you moving your hands to speed me up on the intro? Okay. All right. I thought Chris was like, this intro has taken way too long. And I'm going, yeah, I'm with you, buddy. I have no idea what to say either. <laughs> Let's go. Here it's we are. Like Let's do it. A TV no, show. Looking, looking, wrap it up. <laughs> I was looking at our, uh, at our Twitter mentions on the Binary Jazz Twitter account, and they're all the crappy, just like, this is a topic from a, this is a tweet from a topic that mm-hmm. you might be interested in bullshit. And that's bullshit. So uh, I'm not interested in bullshit. Yeah. Actually, I might be a little interested in bullshit because I need some manure for some areas of the yard. So can you can you tag me on some of those? I might I might need to purchase some bullshit. No, no. Or cow shit. Or You're particularly. Two steps away from buying like a baby cow just for the purpose of manure. God, if that cow could eat poison ivy, then yes. What? Oh, what? Is that what about, still what about that's goats? Are that goats? Bad. Do goats eat po- poison ivy? Yes, goats eat poison ivy, but then they also poop. So the poison ivy grows where they poop. So it's not a great system, it turns out. It just spreads your poison ivy. Um, It is still a problem. I have picked as much of it as I can that's near where the kids go, but we have this hill. It's just like, it's kudzu, most of the hill. There's some trees poking out of it. And then twice as many like vines poking out that are, uh, they're big. I mean, they're three to four feet tall with these enormous leaves that are, going to poison me allegedly make me itch and it, i i am i am so lucky so far having picked uh several evenings gloved long sleeved uh i have not really it's been exposed or at least not in a way that's caused me to itch um that's good also it turns out that it can grow in bushes and so there's a bush there's a little thing we identified and it's poison ivy and it makes sense as to why i got itchy after i spent like a day last year carrying that thing out I mean, it was like five feet tall and like thick woody stalks. I had no idea poison ivy could grow that way. And it can. And it did. Uh, like it can grow into a bush or it can grow inside of a bush? No, no. It can grow as a bush. Like it, it can be like a bush, a bush itself. Like a shrubbery. Yeah. yeah. So here's an idea. You can sculpt a giant labyrinth made entirely of poison ivy. That's not a good idea. (laughs) (laughs) So not only are you trapped, but then you can't climb out because it's poison ivy. Yeah. (laughs) That's like... Or like an Edward Scissorhands kind of like sculpture from the shrub. I feel like, I feel like Allison should be the DM of this uh, (laughs) role-playing campaign. Like this is, this is, this is cold, cold shit right here. (laughs) Um... (laughs) I, I like that idea, actually. A poison ivy like labyrinth is pretty, <laughs> pretty gross. I, mean, I, have I enough of it. <laughs> yeah, I want, I want that to be a thing, but not because I want to walk through it. And at I, the, I can't at imagine. The center, there's like calamine lotion. <laughs> or well, at the out. center, yeah. Gosh, at the center, what would be worth traversing a poison ivy labyrinth? Like, what would have to be in the middle for you to? Be like, oh yeah, of fire. I'm game. A goblet of fire? <laughs> that too. <laughs> I think if someone's like, here's a poison ivy labyrinth and there's a goblet of fire in the middle, I'd be like, huh, that's me. I, I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I go on about my day. I, this definitely shows more of like my influence of things I watched and whatever, but I would go in the labyrinth regardless. <laughs> <laughs> there doesn't actually have to be anything at the center. It doesn't need to be would, like talking worms or like a uh, pit of. I don't have to be rescuing my younger brother. I just. The pit of stench. Uh, <laughs> mm. A talking worm. Yeah. 
talking David Bowie and Cod the reward, Pete. The reward of making it through would be would be satisfactory. Yo, if David Bowie's in the middle, I'm going in. Yeah. Well, uh, obviously. I mean, like, David Bowie's to, anywhere, I'm going. <laughs> there used yep. to be a, a, an attraction uh, in Northern California. So David Bowie? No, Still well, kind of no. get that sometimes. I mean, no. It, like, like an amusement <laughs> attraction. Sure. Uh, which also could apply to David Bowie, honestly. Um, there used to be uh, an attraction. I, I call it an attraction. I don't know what else to call it. Um, it wasn't an amusement park. It wasn't like a theme park. It was just a, a giant maze uh, in like Vacaville or something. Um, and uh, I went there a couple times, but like nobody goes to Vacaville for Vacaville. Like Vacaville isn't a place that you go to. It's like it's a place in between places. So yeah. like you, maybe you would go there because you're on a long road trip and you like want to spend two extra hours on the road uh, or like take a break for like two hours and then get back on the road. Um, anyway, I went there once and it was cool, but it doesn't exist anymore, which is sad. I, it just makes me wonder about like the market for, you know, full on people sized labyrinths. Um, and eventually like there are, you could you could crawl under the walls too. Um, no yeah, not, I mean, not, <laughs> not all of them, not all of them, but some of them. And so like, but like, it was maybe like a foot, maybe even like half a foot off the ground. So like you could crawl under them if you were small. So like all the kids did that. So I did that. Um, not that necessarily crawling under the wall solved any problems. <laughs> which is what I discovered is like, I don't know that this is where I need, need to be going anyway, but like, it seems like a good idea. <laughs> um, and I think they were like five or six feet high. So like technically, if you were big and had upper body strength, you could probably climb over them. And I think I remember people, I think I remember seeing people do that too. And like, as I'm imagining this thing, I'm also thinking about like, this is obviously the before times, because like I can't imagine this thing even existing in in like post COVID uh, America, <laughs> like <laughs> so many so many things wrong here. Uh, so post COVID in America, though, like, do you actually think things are gonna be different? Yeah, not real. Not when things go back to normal, but things aren't back to normal yet. I mean, tell that to Florida for God's sakes. Yeah, well. Florida. I guess I guess normal Florida. in Florida though aren't really a thing. So. My mama used to say Florida is what Florida does. God. I have I nothing went, nice to say. Let's move um, on. The fall I went I went apple picking and there's normally oh. like a corn maze there. Mm. But because of COVID, it was still open limited because of COVID. And then it's outdoors once you're actually through the gate. So they weren't really concerned, but everyone had masks on anyway. And then, but the corn maze was closed because they were worried that they were just like, it's just way too close quarters to socially. Yeah, you could people. very easily like just wind up in a corner with a whole bunch of other people. But then I was so curious because I was just like, well, if you haven't, isn't it just a corn field then? Like if you haven't made a maze out of it, like, <laughs> yes. I don't know. Yeah. Was did they not make the maze yet? Or it was just like the corn? I don't think so because I think they were just like, look, like we just they knew from the get go yeah. that it wasn't going to be a thing. And I was just, well, then this is just a field of corn. You can't even advertise a corn maze. I was disappointed, needless to say. But That's I'm fair. as tall as the corn, so I should just. I just wanted to solve it. <laughs> <laughs> Flush the fucking cash. <laughs> <laughs> well, this will be one of our more explicit episodes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I always, after the fact, I always like, there's a there's an explicit language uh, tag that you can put on the podcast. And I always like, did we swear this one? I can't remember. <laughs> I mean, I guess technically like. I think takes... most of our content probably <laughs> isn't. Yeah, I think technically like you can say shit a number of times before it needs like the flag but like there's certain words that you can't say but i don't even give i don't care yeah <laughs> i put it on anyway if i, I feel like that's it. not where we're going to draw the line in the yeah. sand for that yeah <laughs> um i do have a topic 
Woohoo. Excellent. Sweet. Um, the topic, which I will spell for you. Excellent. Good. Is thonic. What? Thonic. Thonic? Thonic. Spelled C H. C H. T H. T H O O. O N I C. Thonic. Um or tonic, maybe, depending on. That's way too many letters to make silent if you just call it tonic. <laughs> I know. That's why I was going thonic. <laughs> thonic. Uh, yeah, well. Um, it's not a word you'll know, probably, because it's not a word I knew. So, no that's, offense. <laughs> that's, not, that's not saying that we won't know it, but uh, probably we won't know it. Sonic the Hedgehog, my first, <laughs> no, my second, on um, the second game system, I had a Sega Genesis, I played Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog, yeah, I, I played. I'm Hedgehog. sorry, can you spell it again? C-H-T-H. Mm -hmm. T-H, yeah, that's what I thought I heard. Sonic. Sonic, with a C or a K, or both? C. It sounds like a Ben Fold song when I ask it that way. Oh, there's a bluebird over what there. What would the knockoff version of Sonic the Hedgehog be, though? Like... It'd be like but the knockoff version of goes really Sonic, slow. Sonic the naked mole rat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it would you would be like underground, like leaving like a little trail of like how the dirt behind you as the worms evade you trying to get away so they're not eaten. Is that what it would be? See, it doesn't sound sound fun at all, does it? No. <laughs> I can see why it wasn't a hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would instead, uh... of, instead of spinning, he sort of like instead of spinning in a ball, he sort of spins in like a uh, tube <laughs> more like a drill yeah more like a drill. he's got like one of those old timey ones that you have to like crank with your hand yeah to like move the dirt <laughs> forward <laughs> and now there's a robin standing in the driveway staring at me the worst game ever i hope that this is it that the birds come and take me away during this episode hundreds of birds come and pluck me up out of this chair and it's recorded like a combination of up and uh the birds um yeah i mean but definitely something meme worthy posted all over the internet yeah i'm realizing too uh, as i see funny. myself uh yeah. i i'm a little bit uh dressed like a robin with my little red crest here and you know like going to a letter color underneath today maybe that's why the bird is, is looking at you it's like it's very, like whoa that's, that's the, the biggest, biggest robin ugliest seen. robin i've ever seen <laughs> horrid uh, plumage Horrid. When you first said thonic, it sounded to me like it was related to thongs. Mm -hmm. um, so like, I mean, the CH kind of throws it, but like if there is something of or relating to a thong, then it would be obviously mm. thonic, right? Like, like the shape <laughs> of that tree is rather thonic. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> Now I'm looking at my trees in a suggestive way. <laughs> hey, Hickory. Um, <laughs> what's up, Tall and Woody? <laughs> um, I, I think Thonic is actually like a, uh, a treatment for metal. Like you put like, like a tank metal. in like a Thonic treatment to clean thonic it. Thonic treatment, yeah, yeah. But actually, now that I say it, I'm just thinking of the word Sonic. And replacing it so it's kind of <laughs> dumb uh yeah how it's been it's been a it's been a time how's everybody's weeks look how empty this bookshelf is Ooh, is it, is are it? there books that you're getting rid of or books that you're putting into boxes oh okay so there, it was a nice day. There's been a few nice days here. So a lot of stuff has gone out to the curb and successfully dispersed to the masses. And some of it's actually just in boxes. So. To what degree do you have a, do you have like a target of like this amount of stuff needs to go or like this amount of stuff is what we can put into like a U-Haul or something? Yeah, so we have like we have an estimate, so it's like this number of boxes, basically. Um, 
and also just like a nice it's nice to have an excuse to get rid of a bunch of stuff where yeah, you're like do is. i like this yes do i like it enough to bring it with me that's completely different across an entire country yeah yeah like yeah. will i pay by, for this to go by weight no <laughs> um yeah so related to that so our our bird that we've had for pretty much since the kids were very young died uh the other week last week and uh so we have this bird cage and we've had this bird cage since uh since college because oh. this, the bird, this was the bird cage that aaron's cockatiel uh was was in so it's definitely since her cocktail Kahlo. Uh, so it's definitely since then. And then we had other birds after she died. Um, but now we're like, well, the reason, like we feel really guilty about our bird parent parentage because the house that we are in, the, our old house had fans, had ceiling fans. Mm -hmm. And we could let the bird out and she could fly up to the ceiling fan and be completely out of reach of the cats. Um, and so we could let her out and it was a pain in the ass to get her back in the cage, but you know, we could, we could do that here. There's not really any place to escape. Mm -hmm. um, anything that was high was someplace that the cats could technically get to, uh, including like right over like the back glass door, like the little, you know, sill thing they can climb up there or, and had, um, and I don't know that they would necessarily do it because that was when they were much younger, but like, still there's no place that they can, that a bird could. So we never took her out and we felt really guilty and she was kind of in this dark corner and like, didn't see the sun or the outside or anything. And so it was really kind of crappy. Um, so I felt really bad. And now we're in a situation where we'll probably the cat thing isn't going to change. Yeah. And the house thing, as long as we're here is probably not going to change until we like move, move. And if we move, move, like that might be when we go somewhere far away and the bird cage isn't small. Yeah. So do we want to hang on to this thing that we won't use while we are in this house and potentially then need to bring it wherever we're going? And the other thing is like, we can't, we don't feel good about giving it away or like donating it or something because like, you know, there's bird diseases. And if you don't completely oh. totally sanitize the cage, then there's there's a possibility that things could be transmitted or whatever. And we wouldn't want to get someone else's bird sick because of our bird or whatever. Not that that's why she died. We don't think, we think it was just age. But um, that's also like not your responsibility. Uh, sure, sure. <laughs> but like, so we're, we're like, like, okay, so we just, just just toss it, right? Like it's big and expensive and, and, and whatever, but like, that's the most responsible thing because then we're not putting anybody else's animal in danger and we're not like or we're not gonna like we don't really want to bleach this thing that we're never going to use like yeah. you know yeah so thoroughly deep clean it uh is there not like i understand you're worried about bird diseases but like couldn't you just like disclose that in a facebook like marketplace post like hey it's free you should clean the hell out of it before you use it because of bird diseases sure and that's facebook on you if you don't place is a pain in the ass like what we would end up doing is sending it to the di which is deseret industries which is the mormon version of the salvation army um okay do you have an animal shelter you could drop it off at yeah this sounds like a craigslist curb alert thing to me honestly um, craigslist curb alerts are fantastic if you don't that use way them. they could give a bird away in a cage yeah that's a thing i don't know anyway my vote is don't keep the cage yeah. but i also understand that like nostalgia works in mysterious ways nostalgia is a real son of a bitch yeah, well, it's but, not like we don't want birds, but we wouldn't want to be like, like I said, we're probably, it's not probably not going to happen here. Like we would need it. probably a, not going to happen there. And if we move, then we, if we move and we have a new house and we're thinking about getting a bird, then we just get a cage. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Like this is, a, this, is this is one a, of those, oh, just get rid of it. Yeah. Because you're not going to want to pay to move it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's have you ever point. been so attached to a sticker sort of that you were sad about the thing that was attached to that you were getting rid of? Yeah. Yes, and I don't stick stickers to things because of that fear, and it's a problem. Yeah, I know. I had I, a sticker on my computer in college that said "fab" across the front of it. I thought it was hysterical, and it was like it was like a fabric sticker. Like it looked great on the front mm -hmm. of the computer. It was an old Acer like dark, like navy blue case, 
and the sticker was just like the right color profile. It looked like it just came that way. It was beautiful. And that computer died. I'm like, well, I got to keep the case because of the damn sticker. I didn't, but I, I, have, I thought very long and hard about it. I have, uh, removing it. I have um, gotten over my uh, attachment to things because of the stickers that are on it. Because I have decided after going through several laptops and having to like remove all the stickers from them, either because, you know, I'm giving them to someone who isn't me. Well, mostly because I'm giving them to someone who isn't me. Um, uh, I've decided that like the stickers are just part of a journey and who I was and, like, and it's just representative of that journey. And like, maybe there, I have transplanted stickers from like one laptop to the next laptop. Um, it, sometimes works and sometimes doesn't um mm -hmm. but like i would only do that with stuff i really care about um that's really important for me to like like for nostalgia reasons or for something like this is something that like represents me as a human and most stickers that you get at like conferences or whatever are not those things those are just like i was here um yeah. and and pretty much prior to like this current laptop that i have now I never purchased stickers. I just got them. I just picked them up at conferences and things and I thought they were cool. And this was the first time that I actually got stuff that I actually like, hey, I'm going to get some stickers that are really cool and put them on my laptop because why the hell not? And those things are replaceable anyway. So like if I, you know, I'm done with this laptop or whatever and giving it to, to whoever, um, I'll take them off. And, and if I want to get new stickers, I'll get new stickers. And maybe they'll be the same stickers. Maybe they'll be completely different stickers. Like it's it's part of the, it's part of the journey. Yeah, like that's a good, see, that's a healthy way of looking at it. <laughs> I'm in the, I like, I like, I like, that's why I like covering my, <laughs> that's why I like covering my water bottles and stickers because like, by the time I'm done with this water bottle and it's done, like, and I get to start fresh, like this is like all the, just the places that I've been and things that I've, I've, you know, run into. Yeah. And if like, and like, even with this, like I cover up things I don't care as much about with other things that I, at that moment care more about. Like there's like a, there's like a hierarchy, you know? I, I recycled so. my old laptop. Oh, did you? And yeah. And, uh, um, and still took the t stickers off. I, it was, we it was a weird situation though. Like it, the battery was like holding a charge for 30 minutes and that was it. And I'm like, well, I'll replace the battery because I'll try anything DIY. Right? So I Googled it and I'm like, yeah, this battery's like 80 bucks. Like this seems like something I can do. And then um, it turns out that there's like the battery is actually glued inside the case. Yep. So this is this whole stuff where you have to like detach. And there's all sorts of warnings. Like if you puncture the batteries, you will start a fire. Um, and I've seen lithium ion battery fires and I'm like, uh, okay. Actually, I should tell you about my lithium ion battery fire. It was fun. Uh, not mine, but one that I was very close to you and how bad it's been. Um, so that was like, man, this is just not a thing. So I kept using that laptop for a while with like stuck to the wall. And I'm like, this is not, it's not working. Uh, and then I found out that like, you know, there are places that you can give them to that will do that for you or for whoever. So like, great, I'll take those. Do you wanna hear about my lithium ion battery fire? Sure. I'm a little so, nervous, but. It's fantastic. So. I, I used to work in the motorcycle industry and we did batteries, uh, but we did lead acid, like heavy, like car batteries, but for motorcycles that are smaller, right? Um, and lithium ion battery technology about 10 years ago, like people were really excited about it. And people were like, oh, put this in your motorcycle because it has, you know, much higher cranking amperage. It weighs a ton less because I guess the savings of eight pounds matters on a motorcycle. I, I, it does not, unless you're like a super racer or something, but for everybody who's driving the street, it makes no damn difference. But that was the marketing thing for those lithium ion things. The problem is that, um, you know, it's a volatile package. It's like a plastic box, and then the lithium ion battery is like this little thing on the inside. Um, and so we were we were like set up with all the battery vendors, and we were like the lead acid battery, some old school other guys, and then there was this lithium ion one next to us. And we, I was fiddling with someone over there on something. Uh, we were like talking about like adding on like there were all sorts of attachments you screw in the batteries and crap. Um, so I'm like, oh, here, try this thing. And so I went back to the booth to put, to get like another cable attachment. Uh, and then this dude starts yelling and um, like he had created like huge sparks because it's a ton of potential energy. Um, but that was enough to start a thermal reaction. Some of these batteries like 
like expanding like and like there's smoke squirting out of like every crack in it so he grabs it and goes and tosses it in this trash can so it's like like contained uh and then i mean there was really like no great options this like accurate gray green smoke is like spewing out into the air um i don't know if like the entire trade show floor was evacuated uh, or just our section but we were like like get the hell out because <laughs> like is this thing gonna explode is it gonna start a bigger fire it's so, like i grab my laptop bag and like i'm heading out lots of people are heading out and the smoke is just like and it's tall in there you know it's like 30 feet to these like walmart ceilings and you're just watching the smoke like rise and you can't see across like the room anymore and um and the fire department showed up and and then like i don't know like an hour later we were out back in <laughs> So, and the thing was like someone, someone told them like, go throw it in the toilet because we were right by the bathroom. Well, with lithium ion, that would have been disastrous because that would have actually increased. I don't, I actually don't know if it would have made it any worse, but lithium ion exposed to water is very volatile. So I'm not sure if it would have made it more volatile or if it was already a point where it didn't matter. It's just going to keep burning until it went out. Um, but yeah, that was my lithium ion story. It was fun. And, uh, uh, you know, when lithium ion batteries become a thing in cars, like, please be careful. I mean, they are in electric cars, but not like yeah. your starting battery where you have like a brick of potential energy that you're using to do things. That's doesn't seem to be like a great fit for lithium ion. I mean, it, it's a fine fit unless it's cold out and then there's almost no capacity. Wow, the stupid shit I know. <laughs> Sonic batteries, that's who it was. Sonic probably. batteries? That was the name of the company. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Oh, really? I'm so perplexed by the first four letters in the word honest, uh, not the word honestly yeah. in Sonic. The word honestly, I, I've got pretty under control. Yeah, it's the home, first four letters right? of the word honestly are honed, which obviously means yeah. like you're honing in on the truth, right? Yeah, sure, why not? But Sonic, like that's a mouthful in the first four letters, and you don't even say half of them. <laughs> I really want to know. So what it's, but it's scientific. I know that much. I mean, how could it not be scientific with, with the C-H-T-H? -H? Oh, the time's up. Sorry, I didn't notice the timer. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, let's just keep talking about it. Um, so it means subterranean. Um, and it specifically describes deities or spirits in the underworld. So usually for ancient Greece. Um, wow. So like and Persephone and even like Hecate and so Sonic the, the naked mole rat is a little inside like little I mean sort of if it's like burrowing and stuff it's kind of on brand a little I mean, yeah yeah I mean you're not so far off I guess a it's sonic. not your worst guess ever <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it is it is pronounced thonic with a th uh-huh <clears throat> I'm gonna um, ask for a yeah, gin, there's like gin and tonic. Tonic next pulse. time I go to a bar, a gin and tonic, and see what happens. Gin and tonic. <laughs> gin and if I if I descend to Hades, <laughs> there's also a band named Thonic. Yes, and they're apparently the Black Sabbath of Asia. Oh, that's awesome! I can it out that there. Is, <laughs> yeah, extremely badass. But it, they I would look, like to be known as the Black Sabbath badass. of anything. They look badass. I'm just gonna call myself the Black Sabbath of Craft Peak. Because when I was Who's looking at it, I was just like, oh, maybe it's just the band. And I was like, no, I bet it's like, just like, oh, we're dark and like, er, underground. And then I was not, I was pleasantly impressed. <laughs> this chick with her six string bass looks like she could kick someone's ass. Yeah, they did. They definitely, um, I don't know. And then they're all like, I think the description also said like that they're all about bringing like traditional fol folklore back in like the heaviest way possible or something. And I was like, all right, like goal goals. <laughs> That's great. Do you know where they're from? I love that. Um, not uphand, no. I don't have like because yeah. like getting a little peek into like Korean mythology. There's a lot of really wacky dark shit in there, and I could totally believe bringing back traditional <laughs> folklore uh, if if that was if that was where they were coming from. I think they're from think Taiwan. Taiwan. There might be some crossover there. Yeah, Taiwanese. Yeah. That's, yeah, that, that's, that's gonna um, be that's gonna be on my uh, on my Spotify today. 
<laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm definitely going to have to wander through that that labyrinth of poison ivy. <laughs> yeah, that's what I bring to the table. Labyrinths of poison ivy. <laughs> I mean, there's, to be honest, we've really, I feel as though we've really hit some strong phrases in the last few episodes. Um, edge case God has still been hanging in my head for <laughs> weeks now. Um, I, I would like to do something with it. I don't know what. I, I just, I love the... Is the new one... Is the I love the juxtaposition of those words together. I just love it. It's, is the new one Labyrinth of Poison Ivy then? Is that... I think so, yeah. Is that what you're proposing? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think a band called Edge Case God could write a song called Labyrinth, Labyrinth of Poison, of Poison Ivy. Ivy. <laughs> or Poison Ivy Labyrinth. I'm not... Yeah. Yeah. Did I tell you all about my crazy, not my, it's not my crazy. Did I tell you about my like intentional creative time that I've added to my day? Yeah. No. Yes. Maybe. I have an what, hour on my calendar one of those. called create from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. every morning. And I enforce it by saying, I'm going to sit down and like work on something that's, uh, that feels creative. Um, and I thought at first, like, I'm not going to write any code because that's what I do. But, but then there was like, I want to do this thing. And so I did. I'm just going to use this hour for like whatever. Um, and then one day I was like, I should update my blog. And um, blog? I think I gave it, yeah, I think I gave it the hour that I will give it this year, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I guess I, my reaction was like, it made sense for the situation. Why yeah, the you, last post I did was like 2017, blog? maybe. What's that? Oh, geez. Where is this? BinaryGary.com. It's, I mean, it, don't waste your time. There's like two <laughs> articles, maybe. There's some posts from when I worked at WDS when I felt like I probably should be blogging regularly and, and hated doing it. Um, and then I found when I went to my blog, I'm like, oh, here's a post I wrote that's not terrible that I never published. Mm -hmm. So I added a disclaimer and published it. To hell with it. Who cares? No one's reading it, you know? Um, but yeah, then I was going to add like an about page and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, no, this doesn't feel creative at all. This feels like work. So don't look for my blog. It's not coming back. Maybe I'll redirect Binary Gary to something weird. Weirder. Edgecasegod.com. I don't know. I, I do remember, I do remember your blog uh, because I do remember the, uh, now looking at it now, uh, I remember the tagline. If code is poetry, I, I uh, something about anatomic tetrameter. Yep. Hey. Yeah. yeah, that's also on my Twitter profile because. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, because I feel like it's silly and sort of smart ass. Uh, I did feel like it was silly and smart ass five or six years ago, and I haven't felt any need to revisit that or change it. So there, <laughs> we'll sit. Why did I feel like I needed a tagline on my Twitter profile like that? I don't know. Stop. Twitter is a mysterious place. <laughs> God, I love hate it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love hate Twitter. Um, legit, like there are times where I feel like there's value. Uh, uh, and sometimes it just feels like a place to be social and talk to people. And then sometimes it is just like, just absolutely crushing how awful humanity is. Um, uh, what more could you ask for in a social platform, honestly? Like, why would I need Facebook if I could feel terrible and happy and everything in 280 characters or less? <laughs> With no edit. With no edit. I, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's so weird, like you think about Twitter and you go, oh, well, people have really pushed for like, make, make sure you're not like siloing yourself, right? <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> but I've also like looked at that and said like, I, like, I've, like even last night, like I interact with someone on Twitter that I haven't interacted with in a long time. And I, I had unfollowed him at some point and I'm like, I wonder why I unfollowed him. But, but honestly, like, also like, who the fuck cares? I don't need a reason. Like, it's Twitter like this is it's just it's stupid like I'm not gonna yeah, spend any more no. brain power trying to remember why I unfollowed him I'll follow him and if he annoys me again I'll unfollow him and on the I one hope hand people you treat have, me the same on the one hand you have like don't create an echo chamber around yourself uh and surround yourself yes. with, with diverse ideas and whatever on the other hand you have the um Twitter is is toxic and you want to hone your who you're following so that you omit as much of that toxicity out of your feed as possible so that you have yes. like something that's actually pleasant to, to, to do. And sometimes those two things don't necessarily mesh. I love this idea 
this is the new thing I've been chewing on. This idea that like uh, conflict is inherent. So it's rather than avoiding, like there's a great example of conflict, but I think like thinking in business terms, like businesses have sometimes multiple goals and they are often conflicting. And like, uh, personally, I have like, I don't actually have any goals. I had goals. And when I had goals, sometimes they were conflicting. Um, but like, like immediate decisions in front of me or options, like they're conflicting. And so like, often I would feel like, well, you do an AB analysis or whatever and figure out like which one makes the most sense, to, to, right? But, but honestly, I think, I think recently more and more I've been saying like, I'm gonna look directly at the conflict and see like, I don't know, like, is there anything that I can learn about that as opposed to like, you know, like hmm. looking at the data and making a decision that way, like fuck data, just look at it and you know, Maybe it's wrong. Maybe I'll pick the wrong choice, but, but, but that also implies that there's a right and wrong choice, which I, maybe mm -hmm. the essence of conflict is that they're both right and, or they're both wrong potentially, or, or it doesn't matter. That's probably the real answer is none of it matters anyway. I was reading this book that was basically talking about how the word strategy is inherently militaristic mm. and it implies that there's one path to one solution rather oh, than figuring out multiple paths to different solutions that work for everybody. And so it's kind of less community-based and it reminds me of what you're saying. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.